Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you are someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? So today we're going to be talking about 1985's Fright Night. Now if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may or may not have seen my video that I posted about me saying that I'm going to be doing 13 nights on Halloween. Well, officially, unofficially, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all 13 nights. I don't know. Daily uploads for me is very, very hard. So we're going to see just how many I can actually upload within the next 13 days. Now, of course, you guys know that I don't like horror movies. Well, if you're new, hello, welcome. I don't like horror movies, but I don't mind doing classic horror. I actually have only seen the, well, now that I know the remake, like the 2011 remake that does star Colin Farrell as Jerry the Vampire. That's the only one I've seen. I don't honestly remember it too well. Not to say that it was a terrible movie in any shape way or form it just really wasn't memorable for me now for the cult classic it is rated r it is an hour 48 minutes long it is a horror comedy and not only is it directed by tom holland but he actually did the screenplay for it as well and this is actually tom holland's uh directorial debut now another little fun fact about the movie apparently holland wrote the script in three weeks and he apparently was uh, cracking up throughout the process, so he definitely knows what type of movie he was making here. Now, this movie took absolutely no time in getting Charlie to suspect his neighbor being a vampire. So while he was making out with his girlfriend, Amy, who's actually played by Amanda Bierce, who plays Marcy of A Merry Witch Children, and now when he's in the midst of kind of stealing the deal with Amy, he actually ends up looking outside and sees these two guys coming in with this coffin and right away you know arises his suspicion so he immediately honestly within like the first like 17 minutes it's already like suspecting his neighbor of being a vampire now he does have like his familiar which technically is not called a familiar in this movie but i believe that's what they're called when a human you know is with the vampire but i don't know he i don't think he technically was a human actually now that i think about it the way that he died i don't know what the hell he was but he wasn't a vampire because he was out and about doing like daytime activities the practical effects in this movie honestly are really really cool there's this one particular scene with his best friend ed or evil ed and that's kind of what they call him honestly that character you guys i found super super annoying i don't know if you guys seen the movie like what do you guys think about that character the annoyance portion of it honestly i feel like kind of went better when Way he did become the vampire to be honest with you but just overall i really wasn't fond of that particular character he ends up shape-shifting into like a fucking werewolf you guys like who knew you know like a vampire shape-shifting into a werewolf i don't think i've ever seen that before not that i could think of off the top of my head to be honest with you because usually vampires and werewolves i mean aren't they like sworn enemies like they're supposed to be like you know but like here, he shapeshifts into him. And it's kind of funny though because it's kind of like you're like a baby vampire. Like how are you able to kind of do all this kind of stuff? And apparently his transition into being a vampire was very quickly. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna circle back to that with um Amy's character because that kind of didn't make sense. It's best, you know, but it's one of those things where it's best just kind of not to think too much into it and look too much into it because it's gonna really ruin the movie for you but let's go back over here to evil ed he shifts into this werewolf he's trying to attack vincent vincent's like all scared mind you he's supposed to be like this vampire killer but he's kind of like a fraud and you know of course as the movie progresses he does find like that courage that he needs and that faith that he's gonna need and you see the transformation between werewolf and kind of into vampire a little bit and then back into his human form and that particular scene you guys is possibly one of my favorite ones because i feel like those effects were just so so good and yes i mean technically they're not the best but they were like great for that era and i feel like they still hold up but i mean that change was so cool you guys it really really was and let me go over here to amy who again is played by amanda when she gets bit you know she's going through the process can you guys let me know like why her transformation actually was taking longer because like evil ed he apparently turned into a vampire really quickly you know and then here he is shape-shifting but then like amy is kind of going through things you know kind of like what you would expect when somebody gets bit by a vampire she has to sweat and she's kind of like you know doing her thing and then honestly you guys i was really really wanting to do some sort of like makeup to get her vampire look but I suck at doing makeup, uh, just generally my own makeup and then let her know like Halloween makeup. I really wanted to do it just for the fun of it. I did have plans on doing some sort of like Halloween makeup looks like maybe that correspond with character that's involved in the movie that I'm talking about. 
but I don't know maybe I'll do it maybe I should have done some sort of like vampire look which would have been like super simple this vampire movie Holland made it a point that if you do have a cross point at a vampire you do have to have faith in the cross for it to actually work and actually be able to repel the vampire you know you don't have faith it's not gonna work I don't think I've ever seen that before in a vampire movie again y'all can let me know down below off the top of my head I feel like that's kind of always been a thing to cross right you know vampire let me get my crucifix bam so that was kind of interesting of something that holland did again interesting if it's something that's never been done now these are all my thoughts on 1985's fright night i truly truly enjoyed myself with this movie if you have seen it let me know down below what did you guys think about it did you like this one over the 2011 i believe it is remake i know there's a part two i'm not 100 sure if i'm going to actually be reviewing that one for this particular non-official series that i'm doing um i do already kind of have the movies in mind that i want to do and that one's not necessarily incorporated within it i feel like it really holds up it's a great classic 80s horror movie you guys it's a horror comedy so again don't take it too seriously it's october you guys it's the best time to watch it um you can currently find this movie on prime video so yeah check it out if you haven't yet again this is the unofficial official movie number one out of my possible 13 nights of halloween of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to the notification bell so you'll be notified each other to post something new until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye